Well, I think this is really about uh, the university system. So there was this sort of presumption uh, by people on the right that what happens in the university stays in the universities, and that's not correct. Basically, an entire ruling elite class was created in the universities. To understand why that is, you have to understand what universities have become. It used to be universities trained you to be a good citizen and also trained you for a job. And now, unless you are what we call the UCLA a South Campus major, right, a STEM major, they're not training you for either. They're training you to not be a very good citizen, but they are training you to be a membership of the ruling class. And the way we can tell you're a member of the ruling class is you speak the lingo, right? This is what colleges have become. There's a reason, like, what did you learn in college? I was a North Campus major. Not much. I came out with a credential. What does the credential mean? The credential means two things. One, I'm smart enough to make it through college. And two, I've now been trained in speaking the language of the sophisticates. And this is what you see on Twitter when people put their pronouns in their profiles, for example. It's the reason why people put their college degrees in, the, in their profiles. It's because it is saying, I am a member of the elect. Now, what they hate more than anything is if you're a member of the elect, but you don't actually speak the lingo or you don't like the lingo, that's not okay. But we, we've created the, this sort of super-powered group of people who are going to run the world. And we did it by sending them to these institutions where they rack up massive amounts of debt and learn what they are supposed to say at cocktail parties in order so that they are well accepted in the halls of, of liberal intelligentsia and in the halls of power. Uh, and and that's, a, that's a real problem because the reality, I mean, as, as Peter Thiel is fond of saying, is that you know, college does not educate you for a job. There, we'd be much better off if we had an apprenticeship system in the United States for most jobs. And co college is, is basically a place where you go to get a credential and blow a couple hundred thousand bucks and drink. <laughs> then we hear like my governor, at least for now, Gavin Newsom saying, this is the opportunity we've been looking for. So in some ways it's like, yeah, they did all want this because now federal bailouts, suddenly California has money, even though money isn't, isn't worth much inflation. That's not a thing anymore, right? Yeah, I mean, the, the basic idea from the left has always been that emergency is a ratchet. It's a one-way ratchet. And whether you're talking about the Great Depression or World War II, or whether you're talking about the so-called war on poverty, and certainly now, Every crisis is an opportunity to grow government. And because the left thinks, not only in terms of institutional control, but in terms of doing things, right? The, the way that you measure a good president, according to the left, is the president did things. Now, the way you measure a good president, according to the right, is did they pursue policies that were effective in helping Americans? For the left, it doesn't matter, right? The, the most transformative presidents are the ones who may have lengthened the Great Depression by eight years and interned hundreds of thousands of Japanese people, but they did a lot of stuff. Right? And the same thing with LBJ, right? He was a terrible president. He presided over the disastrous Vietnam War. He presided over a tremendous breakdown in race relations. He did a couple of things that were obviously very good, the, voter right, the voting rights bill and the, and the Civil Rights Act. But overall, not a good president, but a transformational president because he did a lot of stuff. Barack Obama, much less successful president than Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton, footnote to history because he was too moderate. Barack Obama, hugely important because he passed Obamacare. And, and you're seeing the same thing with Biden now. This is Biden's mentality with regard to government action. So I've been thinking something that I'm gonna drop in this interview with Ben Shapiro right now since you're bringing up Biden and Obama. My suspicion, and Ben, you know I'm going off the grid in a week, but that the Biden mental collapse is so obvious at this point that it can't hold much longer, and I think they thought they were gonna get at least a year, I'm not so sure they are, that the way it's gonna break the seal, the way it's gonna actually get into mainstream, because we can all talk about it, but no one will talk about it on CNN, et cetera, is that Obama in an interview is gonna say something. He's gonna have a one-liner saying, you know, maybe Joe's lost a step or two, and then suddenly everyone's gonna start saying it. What, what do you think about that crazy uh, I think theory? the only way that Obama does that is if he thinks that there's a backup plan. The problem for the Democrats is- Oh, no, no, meaning he'll have a full back backup plan, but he'll be the one that is basically gonna take out Biden. I mean, I think that if that, I think if that does happen, if there's a backup plan, you're right that it would be Obama who would do it. He's the only person inside the Democratic Party who is well-respected enough to, to get away with it. Uh, the problem for the Democrats is they really, really need Joe Biden. I mean, they really need Joe Biden because what's waiting in the wings is Kamala Harris. And man, is she unpopular and man, is she bad at this. She is just garbage at this job. And her job is really easy and she's really terrible at it. So you know, I, I, I wouldn't, honestly, if the Democrats had a way of supplanting Kamala Harris with Michelle Obama, I, I think that they would try something like that. Yeah, I'm just, I just have a feeling it's gonna be Obama that's the one that's the airlock basically because he's the, he's the one that will just slightly leak it out and then the plan will be there. That is my almost August prediction. All right, chapter three, you sort of hit on some of this already. The creation of a new ruling class. That, that seems to be what this is all about right now. Yeah, well, I think this is really about uh, the university system. So there was this sort of presumption uh, by people on the right that what happens in the university stays in the universities, and that's not correct. Basically, an entire ruling elite class was created in the universities 
To understand why that is, you have to understand what universities have become. It used to be universities trained you to be a good citizen and also trained you for a job. And now, unless you are what we call the UCLA a South Campus major, right, a STEM major, they're not training you for either. They're training you to not be a very good citizen, but they are training you to be a membership of the ruling class. And the way we can tell you're a member of the ruling class is you speak the lingo, right? This is what colleges have become. There's a reason, like, what did you learn in college? I was a North Campus major. Not much. I came out with a credential. What does the credential mean? The credential means two things. One, I'm smart enough to make it through college. And two, I've now been trained in speaking the language of the sophisticates. And this is what you see on Twitter when people put their pronouns in their profiles, for example. It's the reason why people put their college degrees in, the, in their profiles. It's because it is saying, I am a member of the elect. Now, what they hate more than anything is if you're a member of the elect, but you don't actually speak the lingo or you don't like the lingo, that's not okay. But we, we've created the, this sort of super powered group of people who are going to run the world. And we did it by sending them to these institutions where they rack up massive amounts of debt and learn what they are supposed to say at cocktail parties in order so that they are well accepted in the halls of, of liberal intelligentsia and in the halls of power. Uh, and and that's, a, that's a real problem because the reality, I mean, as, as Peter Thiel is fond of saying, is that you know, college does not educate you for a job. There, we'd be much better off if we had an apprenticeship system in the United States for most jobs. And co college is, is basically a place where you go to get a credential and blow a couple hundred thousand bucks and drink. By, by the time your kids, uh, who are all under 10, by the time they make it to college age, do you think college is going to look anything remotely like it looks I don't. Right I mean, I, I think that by the time my kids are in college, uh, I think that everything is going to be online. I think they're going to be able to pick and choose what kind of courses they want to take. Uh, and I think, frankly, that a lot of businesses will have gotten wise to the scam that college is, and they'll just start hiring directly out of high school. I think you're going to see people going back to almost an old model where they say, okay, well, you got straight A's in high school. You're obviously smart. Come here and apprentice for two, three years, and, and then we'll pay you. Chapter four, how science trademark defeated actual science. This was making me think of that great Fauci line when he basically said, I am the science. He went full Palpatine on us. That's basically what's happened here, right? You challenge this guy and you're challenging science. Yeah, and this is the shtick of the left is that there are two problems with regard to science and, and the sort of move toward authoritarianism. The, one is the idea that the science is an institution and not in, in, in actual process, right? Normally science is a process, not an institution. When you have Fauci declaring Order 66 uh, on everybody who, who disagrees with him, uh, it's, it's obviously indicative of a broader mindset. The two big problems with, that you see inside the scientific community are, one, I label the ultra-crepidarian problem, mainly because I love the word ultra-crepidarian, but it basically that just means word, speaking outside of your, your actual purview. So you see this from, for example, during the last pandemic, uh, when people said all of a sudden that racial justice was a health issue. And you say to yourself, whoa, 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 hold up a second. I'm gonna need you to explain that one. How exactly is racial justice a public health issue? And there's no actual rationale. It's just, we're scientists. We have a doctor in front of our name. Therefore, respect me when I talk about race relations. It's like, well, you don't know anything about race relations. I don't know what you're talking about. So science is speaking outside their purview, but using the imprimatur of science in order to push it. And this leads in reverse to what I call the bleed over effect, which is where people will say things that are unscientific and then pretend that the actual science supports them. Uh, and so you, you have this, this people who will say things that are just political, but then they will say that this is the science, right? So that's what Fauci was doing is he was saying, you know, not, uh, he, he was saying, here is a political perspective on what the, what the rates of herd immunity are, but politics is defining that, but I'm now going to say that that's science. And that opens the door to all sorts of bad things being treated as science, even though they're not actually scientific. And so it's, it's a really high level form of gaslighting specifically because we all do, science is like the last institution that we actually respect because it's verifiable. So if you remove the verifiability of science and instead you make it into an institution, you guaranteed yourself an enormous amount of power, but only by undermining what science was supposed to be in the first place. Well, they love science, except if you ask them how many genders there are. Yeah, exactly. Then, then it gets a little bit confusing. Or whether a baby this, in the womb is a baby, like a minute before it's born. Right, exactly. Even though, as you know, we're, we're in the middle of surrogacy right now, and basically a day after or two days after they put the egg and the sperm together, we know the sex. And it's right. like the doctor isn't saying- How dare you? You don't, you don't, you don't. <laughs> they are projecting the sex onto the, onto the child. How dare you? It's not a click down menu with, you know, 47 options. Uh, this isn't specifically what's in the book, but when I was reading this chapter on science, I was thinking that it's a little bit sort of like your last book, which that this, we're worshiping science now, perhaps instead of worshiping God or having some set of beliefs outside of ourselves. Does that just seem like the obvious conclusion of a, of a purely secular society? Yeah. That we'll just worship things that will change every day? Yeah, I mean, I think that's right. I, I think that human beings have a religious impulse. 
And somebody, something's going to fill that religious impulse. And why not the thing that has brought us unbelievable prosperity, high levels of technological advancement? It's prevented up to this point disease and death in extraordinary numbers, right? What, why wouldn't you worship that thing? The problem is it's not a thing, it's a process. So you can certainly have respect for the process, but there have to be some guiding values beyond just the process. The problem is that people don't have a habit of, of following the, the, uh, the system. They're, they're more interested in just appointing people as their great leaders. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics instead of nonstop yelling, check out our politics playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.